Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'd like to discuss a topic that's been coming up more and more frequently, and that is, how do I install your autonomous fan controller in my system? Now, I'm utilizing a demonstration unit here that was built for a client with the unit installed. Um, I just got done doing it, and I wanted to cover, in general, how to install it. Now, there's a lot of universal techniques to do this. Of course, it's not rocket science, but again, in order to get the best results, I wanted to give you an outline of some things you can do when you're utilizing the thermal uh, uh, temperature sensor we want to make sure where it's placed on whatever drive you're trying to register for temperature in order to trigger the fan on and off it's it's placed properly and it's actually mounted to the drive correctly so what I'm going to do right now I've got the laptop position a certain way I'm going to grab my trusty electrical screwdriver here and I'll pan around the camera to show you exactly what was what is going on here now coming over to the system you're not going to see too much difference um, the one thing to pay attention to is that our heat sinks are of course shifted over to the right side when you're looking at the drive from the rear and the main reason that is is so we could put our thermal sensor you can see it right there uh, on the drive and you can see I did that I shifted it over so that we actually have the thermal sensor positioned on one of the G540's drives um, once again this is totally up to you but keep in mind the closer that thermal sensor is mounted to a drive the more accurate the temperature sensing will be um, again you can come over here and you can see how we actually have the unit installed uh, again I've used my traditional thumb nut mounting platform so if the unit ever had to be replaced you can have it out in seconds um, again everything is tied for optimal neatness and airflow solder and flux was used on every connection for the unit um, and again real simple installation I mean not much going on here drill your four holes you do have your power LED and you do have your amber LED which actually becomes active once the fan is cycled on um, but in order to mount the actual thermal sensor, I'm just going to come right here and position that camera, you can see here it's black, and that black is actual potting silicone. Okay, that's my ED704 that's available in my store, but before I did that, I actually used thermal epoxy to mount the unit to the drive. And the main reason I do that is because that's going to conduct heat more efficiently. Then when you put the, the potting silicone over it, it basically becomes a central unit where, again, it molds the unit more or less to the back of the drive. And it's, it's super, super securely mounted. And that's what we want. Of course, the uh, silicone and the thermal adhesive, both are rated to up to almost 500 degrees. So you're not going to have any issues there. But again, it does lead to a very clean installation and of course I have the thermal sensor close to the fan where it should be so that once this unit does kick on and the heat sinks are doing their job of course it will pick up that the airflow is present and the drive's temperature will drop very rapidly once again shutting the unit off so just keep that in mind when you guys go to mount your own um, again a real easy way let's see if we can do this just pin that down a real easy way to check how this unit becomes active is to utilize an actual heat gun and you can just heat this heat the actual thermal sensor up really quickly and you can see it'll become active. I'm going to turn the drive on now. You can see now our LED just became active because the controller is now on. The red is actually illuminated. I'm sure you can see that. And you can hear how quiet the system is, okay, as it should be. Once we grab our trusty heat gun to validate that the unit is active, now you can see once again that we've got the orange amber LED doing its job. It's flickering. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. It's going on and off really quick. And you can hear the fan's RPM dropping as the drive is actually being cooled down. Once she goes off, of course, you'll see that LED just totally go out. And the drive, once again, the uh, thermal sensor will reset itself. There we go. And the system has once again reached the, uh, the proper cooling level that would disengage the fan from actually being powered. So again, to mount the unit, real simple. If you guys have access to silicone, I definitely recommend going over uh, the actual thermal sensor with silicone after you actually use thermal epoxy to mount it. That is the correct way to do it. It makes it more like a potted surface. And you can see here, this is solid, okay? 
Um, overall, if you're installing it on a system that is not a G540, I would utilize the same technique. I think the same technique, um, it will work just, just as well on an individual drive system. Let's say you're using Raptors or you're using another Gecko drive, hopefully a Gecko drive. If you're using Chinese drives, um, like lead shine or uh, another make one of the key things about the Chinese drives that I do think is a great idea is they always have heat sinks integrated um, the closer you can mount the unit to the direct drive where it's conducting heat the better off you are okay so just keep that in mind as you actually go to install the unit um, again utilizing the proper adhesives is extremely critical please do not use thermal tape. I've seen guys do that, and thermal tape is crap, guys. Um, if you're dealing with uh, PC use, you're fine with that. With these kind of systems, I totally, totally do not recommend utilizing anything but the proper adhesives. Once again, you want a thermal adhesive, preferably thermal epoxy, and then you'd want to use more or less a silicone um, product uh, designed around electronics. Now, a lot of guys will say, well, I may not be able to get that. Order it, do whatever you've got to do. You can go to Home Depot. Sometimes you get lucky Lowe's and they may have it. Um, I don't know if Radio Shack is still open all over the country, but you can usually get it there. If you guys are lucky enough to have a fries near you, you can definitely get it there. But utilizing the proper adhesives will assure that the unit works the way it was designed to. And I can't emphasize that enough. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. Um, if you guys do have any other questions, you know I'm always there. Just let me know. But overall, the installation on this unit is very, very straightforward. And again, this unit does support two fans. It does have the warning alarm if the drive actually gets too hot. You'll hear the warning alarm kick on. It does have the on and off switch. So you can turn the alarm on and off if you choose to do that. I don't know why you'd want to turn it off, but if you wanted to, you can. And again, you're basically golden here. You know, I mean, this is now the easiest way to cool the system and not worrying about overheating. And of course, if you are wondering if you're in an, an area that actually would raise the drive temperature to the extreme, if you hear that alarm go off, you know it is. So again, the unit is, it's, it's super easy to use and implement once again, once you understand how we do everything. And I hope this video has made it really clear. Um, again, I thank all my subscribers. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can contact me below. Email again, direct is storm2313 at gmail.com. You can contact me, of course, through my eDealer Direct store on eBay. That link will be there as well. I love you guys. Thank you all. Take care.